sometimes you make me so angry. Oh, wow. I'm, I'm just sorry. kidding. I'm just kidding. But yeah. sometimes some things makes God angry. Well, yesterday, Paul started off telling us, hey, this whole book's going to be talking about the good news. But sometimes in order to get to the good news, you have to have clearly defined what the bad news is. Yep. And that's what he's talking about today. So he's Chris and I'm Jeff and we're the Bible Guys. So, Jeff, yes. we're going to do a segment today called the Whisper Challenge, Ooh. which is, uh, I think we've seen made famous by Jimmy Fallon, I think, is yes. who it is. Yeah, yeah. And, he, and you put the headphones. This one's fun. Actually, I think several late, sh- late night show guys do this. But Yeah. But you put the headphones on, and then you just try to whisper a phrase. I don't have a phrase prepared. Do you uh, have a phrase? I have one. I have one for you if you want oh, it. Oh, excellent. Good. I'll, I'll, I'll go first then, okay? Okay, okay. Uh, Matt, why don't you do two? Come up with two phrases, two. then I'll switch. Well, I just came up with one. All okay. right, well, come okay. on. Okay. All right, here we go. I'm putting uh, okay. them on. I cannot hear you. All right. And then I'm going to play. So you can play some music, music so you can't hear what I say. I... Okay, and I have to here whisper. We go. I have to whisper, but you have to be able to see me, right? I have to whisper. Okay. Ready? Yes, sure. Okay, okay. You have not because you ask not. Uh, I'm not even close. <laughs> go slower. You have not because. You have something. Oh, uh, no? You don't have it? Uh, yeah. I'm not even close okay. on this one. Uh, the Book of James says you have not because you ask not. Oh, I saw that you have. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah you okay. got those parts. All right. Okay. All right. You, you want to do another one? Good. Uh, uh, sure. Let me think of another one real quick. All right. Um, Tell me when. I'll push um, play. I said iPod. Okay. This is really hilarious. Okay. It's not iPod. It's my iPhone. Here we All go. Right. God so loved the world that he gave his only son. For God so loved the world that he gave his only son? <laughs> yeah. I said it out loud. So, yeah, Did you yeah. say begotten son? No, I said his only son. His only yep. son. Yep. Excellent. Okay, good yeah. job. Yeah, all right. Yeah. All I right. kind of planted in your head that it was Bible verses. So. Right, right. Yep. Yep. All right, and, well, and let me you change chose, my... And by the way, you chose the most famous yeah. one of all time. Well, I was hoping you'd know that one. I mean, you are one of the Bible guys. <laughs> right. All right, so I'm going to put these headphones on. Yep. And then and, I got uh, to think of a phrase to, to say. What are we... Um, okay. All right, ready? Yes. Can you hear me? Whoa, my goodness. I know. Ready? Okay. Here we go. That's a spicy meatball. Oh, man. <laughs> uh, you said something about that's... Let's uh, say it again. Say it again. That's a spicy meatball. Oh, that's a spicy meatball. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I said, I said, that's a spicy meatball. Oh, yeah. yeah. All right. All right. Uh, yeah. uh, I picked up on spicy, and then yeah. I thought, okay, Zarba's going to be talking about meatballs. <laughs> yeah, for sure. All right, let me think of another one. Here we go. Um, okay. All right. Uh, here we go. Ooh. All right, here we go. Okay. Bought a Honda, should have bought a Hyundai. What? Bought a Honda, should have bought a Hyundai. Something all day. I don't know. <laughs> I can't. I have I, no idea. I said, bought a Honda, should have bought a Hyundai. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> that's funny. Okay. Those bought are a, hard, man. Bought a Honda, should have bought a Hyundai. Yeah, that's right. That's right. That's hilarious. Uh, you're making fun. Okay, uh, those are fun, fun ones to do. They're so hard. Yeah, they they're really difficult. Yeah, yeah. yeah it's it's pretty pretty amazing actually. Okay. I, I, it dawned on me just a second ago. I have a phrase I'm going to say next time we do it. Oh, so, really? Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. Wow. Yeah, this is. Uh, well, geez, I, I you know we're only three minutes in. Uh, well, I, now. I promise you, you will not get it. It's not possible that you could get it. Well, so, <sighs> yeah. All right. I guess we'll just save the suspense. You can save it. Okay. Because well, the the minutes okay. are going. So. Okay. Well, all right. All right. So anyway, so uh, so yesterday yeah. we, we we introduced the idea that uh, Paul is writing a book, uh, or we're actually writing a letter to the Church of of Rome, but he's actually never been to the Church of Rome. That's right. So there's a there's a there's a church that has you know growing. It's popular, and uh, you know Paul eventually gets there, uh, but right around 57 A.D. Now keep in mind he actually dies in Rome, <laughs> in right. right around 68 or 69 A.D. Right. So this is about 11 years before his, his death that he doesn't know that's coming, obviously. And, and he says, hey, I, I long to get to you. And it's actually um, uh, the second time that he goes to Rome, he was actually advised not to go. Uh, but he went anyway, and he ends up you know, losing his life, was in prison and things like that. 
Uh, but anyway, so right now he's just introducing himself yeah. to the, the church of Rome. Right. So that was the first 17 verses. Yep. And then he immediately pivots. I think the most important verse that we're going to read um, in understanding why he writes the next three chapters was verse 17 of yesterday when he says, this good news tells us how God makes us right in his sight. Mm. So that means you have to understand that means we're not automatically right in his sight. We need to be made right in his sight. Right. Right. So the good news is how God rescues us from our sins, how God saves us from our, uh, from the, the tragedy that we're heading towards apart from Christ. Right. So this whole thing that he's talking about now, he's going to give us bad news. And it's like three chapters, four chapters of five chapters, six, six chapters of bad news. Wow. Right? And, and so it's, it's kind of tough unless you understand he's just setting the stage yeah. for the overwhelming delight of the good news of God's grace, right? Well, you know, it's it's really good that you brought that up because it's also important for our, you know for all of us, uh, not just our listeners, but but me and you, yeah. to understand that even though this may seem like common sense to you and I because we've grown up living in church world, this was brand new news for them. Yes, think about think about you. Let's pretend you're a man who's thirty years of age and you live in Rome, okay? And the only thing you really know about religion, and especially the, the God of the Jewish people, yeah, right? Yeah. Is that, is that people have temples everywhere, right? Right. Or, or actually one main temple, right? Uh, and, and, and you, and you're supposed to bring, uh, you know, sacrifices to pay for your sins. And, and, yeah. you know, and, and there's all these sort of, you know, laws that are laid out and you hear about them and there's so many of them. And, and, and so, I mean, you just really, truly, uh, you know, don't have an understanding of what Paul's talking about. Paul's laying the ground because what he's saying is, is like, Hey, I want to talk about all this bad news, all this sin, because theologically you have to understand what happened. Yeah. The event of Jesus Christ coming to the earth has theological implications for the world, yeah. but also for you. And so I'm going to get very specific because this is brand new news for people. That's right. So he's going to give the bad news now yep. so that he can delight us with the good news of God's grace and that God's grace is enough. Remember, yep. he talked about that in... Second Corinthians, when he begged God to take away this thorn in the flesh, remember? Yeah. And God's answer was, my grace is enough for you. Right. And so Paul delights in teaching us about God's grace. But again, you don't need grace unless there's something in your life that requires it. So um, I just want to caution people as we read. Uh, he gives lists of various sins and different things. And a lot of times we focus on the one that's not our issue, or we can only see the one that is our issue. But understand in this next passage, he's un he's unpacking almost every kind of sin you can imagine. Oh, yeah. He, and so, he lists like 20 of them or so something So this, like this that. applies to every one of us. Yeah. Every one of us is what he's talking about here. There's none of us that aren't included in Paul's next little talk. So here we go. Ready? This is going to be interesting. In verse 18 of the first chapter of Romans, he says, But God shows his anger from heaven against all sinful, wicked people who suppress the truth by their wickedness. They know the truth about God because he's made it obvious to them. For ever since the world was created, people have seen the earth and sky through everything God made, they can clearly see his in, invisible qualities, his eternal power and divine nature. So they have no excuse for not knowing God. Yes, they knew God, but they wouldn't worship him as God or even give him thanks. And they began to think up foolish ideas of what God was like. As a result, their minds became dark and confused. Claiming to be wise, they instead became utter fools. And instead of worshiping the glorious, ever-living God, they worshiped idols made to look like mere people and birds and animals and reptiles. So... God abandoned them to do whatever shameful thing their hearts desired. As a result, they did evil and degrading things with each other's bodies. They traded the truth about God for a lie. So they worshiped and served the things God created instead of the creator himself, who's worthy of eternal praise. Amen. That is why God abandoned them to their shameful desires. Even the women turned against the natural way to have sex and instead indulged in sex with each other. And the men, instead of having normal sexual relations with women, burned with lust for each other. Men did shameful things with other men, and as a result of this sin, they suffered within themselves the penalty they deserved. Since they thought it foolish to acknowledge God, he abandoned them to their foolish thinking and let them do things that should never be done. Their lives became full of every kind of wickedness, sin, greed, hate, envy, murder, quarreling, deception, malicious behavior, and gossip. They're backstabbers and haters of God, insolent and proud and boastful. They invent new ways of sinning and they disobey their parents. They refuse to understand. 
They break their promises, are heartless, and have no mercy. They know God's justice requires that those who do these things deserve to die, yet they do them anyway. Worse yet, they encourage others to do them too. Yeah, yeah. so there's a lot in this passage. Oh, there's a ton. And yeah. when, 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 when Paul sort of shifts gears in verse number 18, which is where we started, uh, let's talk about that first part before we get into all those those lists. Absolutely. Uh, but uh, when it says, uh, by the way, I absolutely love this idea because Paul says, uh, he, really start, well, he starts off very clearly saying that God uh, has anger and judgment for, for wickedness and for sin. He talks about that. And then he goes right on to say they know the truth about God because he's made it obvious to them. Yeah. And I think that that is so interesting because he says, for since the world was created, people have seen the earth and sky, and through everything God made, they can clearly see his invisible qualities, his eternal power and divine nature, so they have no excuse for not knowing God. And and so isn't this the sort of the big debated passage about you know, the scenario of what if a man was born on an island and mm-hmm. he's lived and died and he's and nobody's ever going to tell him about Jesus Christ. Yeah. You know, how can he come to know God? And uh, and that's really sort of the, the scenario in the Christian mm-hmm. world, right? Well, I've told the story before uh, getting out in a village where there'd never been any outsiders come into the village. And right. when we asked the chief that we had a big meeting, there's all these chiefs there and, and elders of the village and the main chief. I've got a photo of him on my phone. And we asked them, um, uh, have you ever heard of Jesus Christ? And they all had a consultation they met. And then the chief came back and said, none of us here know who Jesus Christ is. But if you tell us what village he's from, we'll help you find him. <laughs> and they all, they didn't know who Jesus Christ was. They thought these white guys are in a village because <laughs> some guy named Jesus Christ was lost. Wow. So they never heard of him. So what happens to that person, right? And God is saying that every person is without excuse in that creation exists, which should make us recognize there's a creator, right? right? And that's the beginning. The beginning is that. And then the the us being sent out with the Great Commission is to tell everybody is that may or may not help people connect automatically to Jesus Christ and salvation, but it should point us towards a creator. And so God's riled up in this passage over people who've rejected even the idea of the creator, rejecting right. that idea, and he's riled up. And instead, they've gone on and they've worshiped the created things. Right. Okay. Have you ever been, um, you, well, you've been in Rome, right? Have you been in Rome? Uh, I yeah. have no, yes, I've been in Rome over only on a layover. A layover we were there yeah. for like 12 hours and we sort of drove around quickly and saw things. Saw so Colosseum, stuff like we that. just drove by it. Okay. We didn't even get yeah. to go in it. There's a, there's a building there that's a church. It became a church, but um, in the, uh, the early times, it's called the Pantheon. And the Romans celebrated the fact that they had lots and lots of gods. And inside the Pantheon, all around the inside of the Pantheon, there were all these statues of all these gods. And they embraced many of the gods that the Greeks had. They just renamed them. Uh, And the Greeks had tons of gods. Some of them were created things. And like the the Egyptians, it was mostly all their gods were created things. And some were, you know, uh, uh, characters that they kind of had put in place to worship. And God said, this is the natural thing. Either you choose to believe in the creator or you start worshiping the the things that the creator made. Um, humans naturally worship. It wasn't until the uh, Enlightenment when, uh, you know, Voltaire and a few others began to put out this idea of atheism. Uh, very, I mean, this is a very new thing in the development of humanity to start rejecting the idea of any God. It's that, so we have always been pre-wired to worship and either we worship the creator or we worship what's been created. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. And I, I love that because I think that, uh, you know, the idea that there is a God, um, you know, is just, it's amazing to me how you can look at creation in the sky and you can say, man, there has to be a creator. And it, it also, it's also amazing to me how people look at that and think, no. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. Like the idea that somebody would say that there is not a creator. Yeah. Uh, I, I actually saw a TikTok the other day with Ronald Reagan and he said, uh, he said, I long to have uh a, a dinner with the atheists and agnostics of the world. I love Reagan's jokes, yeah, yeah, yeah. and uh, they're, they're becoming more popular. By the way, sure, they're coming sure. back. They're he was very clever. Back. He was clever. And he and he said uh, he says, and I, I I long to give them the best meal that they've ever had, like a nine course meal. He said just 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 to delight them in such a way to where they would have no choice but to say, please give our compliments to the chef. And uh, and then he goes, I would look at them and say. Uh, Whatever gave you the idea that there was a creator of this food? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, a chef. Right? Yeah, I didn't know Reagan had a TikTok. Does that creep you out just a little bit? 
It's not Reagan's TikTok. Oh, I thought you said you saw it. I saw it on a TikTok. Oh, oh, I see. Okay. Yeah. 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 I'm a pretty his, simple person. His, his jokes are... Uh, yeah, very clever. Very clever. Yeah. yeah. So, so this idea then, you know, he's talking to Romans who would build a building to celebrate all their gods. And it's in that context that he's trying to differentiate between the way that the, the major majority of their population, which was very sophisticated, uh, even by our own standards, very sophisticated. They indoor, indoor plumbing, uh, they took baths, they had, uh, uh, you know, water in their homes. They built, they built stadiums as big as the stadiums we build now. Right. Right. Their right. sophistication. They're the ones who developed the republic concept of government. Now, they have an emperor at this point, but they, they're the ones who developed it. They had a Senate. They had representative government. They had uh, the most powerful military in the world. They were incredibly sophisticated people. Yeah. And, uh, and yet, they worshiped all these <clears throat> other gods. And so he's, he's kind of going at that, that there's either one god or there's all these gods, and that's what happens. But the natural order of things is when you reject the creator, then you begin to indulge just in your own flesh. And then the creator steps back and says, fine. Mm -hmm. Do your thing. And then that's where he brings up all these, these issues. He brings up homosexuality. He brings up every kind of wickedness and sin and greed and hate and envy and murder and quarreling and deception, malicious behavior and gossip and backstabbers and haters of God, insolence and pride and boastfulness and uh, uh, disobedient to parents and refusing to be taught. And they break their promises and they're heartless and they have no mercy. He gives like these 20 things. Yeah. They said, this just becomes the natural order of society when you've rejected the creator. Yeah. And, and, and it's interesting, the concept of, of what he's trying to uh, talk about here. And he spends a few extra verses talking about sexual sin, but uh, you know, this is actually uh, the, the pattern of Paul, you know, later on in Romans, doesn't he talk about how, uh, of all the of all the things that we do, uh, sexual sins are, are, are done with our bodies, yeah. and uh, and he says that first later Corinthians, on. First Corinthians, first Corinthians. Or, or, no, yeah, I'm sorry, mm -hmm. yeah, that's right. It's yep. First Corinthians. Yep. And and, uh, and and so Paul hangs on that, and and he actually lists all these other things, and and the the umbrella of what he's talking about is he's talking about how when people uh, get lost in their own ways, and they get lost and they get hung up with all these different things. Number one, not only are they denying the God of creation which they should surely know. And he's saying they've rejected them. But then he's also saying some people can get so lost in their ways and, and, and in their sins that God turns them over, turns them over. He abandoned them to do whatever shameful things their hearts desired. And yeah. he just gives this laundry list yeah. of people. And then I think it's interesting how he says uh, that they start worshiping the creator instead of the creation. The creation. The creation instead or, of the creator. Or, yeah, I'm sorry, backwards, yeah. yeah. And and I love also how he gets specific and says they make these idols uh, representing mere mortals and mere animals, <laughs> right, right? right? You know, he's, he's, he's really taking what they worship. You know, they're, they're thinking, oh, they're worshiping these idols. They, they treat them as gods, little yeah. g. And he's saying... That's a statue of a bird. Right, right. <laughs> right. It's just a bird, man. It's, it's just, it falls. It's not even a real bird. It's a statue of a bird. <laughs> right. It yeah. just, it, it ranks all the way down here, right? They're just yeah. mere mortals. Yeah. These, these are things that are going to turn into dust, right. right? And you're, and you're worshiping these things. And that's sort of the category that he's listing these sins to, right? right? Yeah. He's saying, he's saying, listen, God has given uh, things and, and we, we just, we just, we're just spending all of our time indulging, worshiping, and, and focusing on all the wrong things. Yeah. And we could do it to such a degree that God just abandons us in our sin and just says, man, they, they're just lost. Yeah. And, and then, then he goes on and talks about how, uh, you know, he says he makes a really sort of a big statement and says, they know God's justice requires that those who do these things deserve to die. And by yeah. the way, some of these things he's listing uh, I'm sure that there are laws that, that, that would talk about death. But actually, I think Paul is actually referring to the spiritual here. Because he's talking about how sin, he's about to unpack, right? How sin uh, brings death. Yeah, chapter 5. He's going to bring that yeah, up. Yeah, yeah chapter yeah. 5. Mm -hmm. So he's leading up to the fact yeah. that there is a high price. It's physical and spiritual death. For sin. All of the terrible things in life, like death, are because of sin. 
Right. And this is what he's trying to do is he's building the argument. So some people get hung up on whatever their favorite thing is to argue about in this passage on, oh, it's, you know, he, he gave special attention to sexual sin or whatever. And then they'll minimize disobeying their parents or being heartless or refusing to understand or breaking, you know, promise breakers. Right. They refuse to recognize those things. But what Paul's trying to say is all these sins are rejecting God. There's a consequence. It's physical and spiritual death. Later on, he's going to say, all the world is broken and groans. All of creation groans yeah. under the weight of, of the sin that has happened in the world. And this sin, eventually what we're going to find out is this sin killed Jesus. Jesus paid the price for it. So he's building this argument of why we need Jesus. Right. And so don't dismiss these things. Accept them. Accept what he says as this is the natural order of how humanity winds up rejecting God and then indulging in these things that then cause all this devastation and brokenness. And the only solution is God's grace. And that's what he offers soon. And at the beginning of the podcast, we said there is no good news without bad news. Yeah. And so, you know, it's, there's a reason why he says, I once was lost, but now I'm found. Right. Right. And that's the reason why the, the song is Amazing written that grace. way. Right. Because, because you have to be lost in order to be found. Mm-hmm. And, and by the way, there has to be a problem before Jesus can come and offer the solution. That's right. And so the problem is the payment for sin is death. Right. And so deserving to die. Sure. Maybe according to some laws uh, that were put into place that people understood. Well, uh, and also he's, he's referring to the natural law. Yeah. The natural if, law. If, if you sin, you will die. God said at the very beginning to oh, humanity. Yeah, sure. Right. So sure. He's, that's what he's the, referring the to here. That's right. It's, it's not about government law here. He's not talking about government. Okay. He's talking about the natural law of if you sin, you'll die. And he, so in the same way that you should be able to look at creation and know there's a creator. He's also saying instinctively, we know there's a consequence to sin. Oh, gotcha. That, that, that's, yeah. that's what I, I believe he's saying I wouldn't there. have read it that way. Yeah, yeah. So that's interesting. So uh, so either way, though, there, there's, it's the physical and then there's the spiritual, and both are true. And he, and he builds on that idea. Mm-hmm. So, you know, hey, I once was lost, but the good news is Jesus Christ has come, and um, it's just right about that time. So we're excited to dive into chapter 2 next time as he continues on, actually, of, of more of the same in some ways. Right, right. But he'll eventually just sort of weave in the good news of grace. He, he peppers all this bad news with some good news from now on. There's always a good news statement with more bad news. So yep. it'll be encouraging as we keep moving forward. Yeah. So we'll hopefully see you next time on The Bible Guys. 